let us offer our consecration to the Lord. Lord, we offer up to you this day, and we ask that we may glorify your name in all that we do. We ask that we may be living your spirit in the spirit of St. Juan Diego and Our Lady of Guadalupe, that we may come to bring alls to to come to know the glory of the Lord. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Well, today is a very interesting day in the church. And I know that, as I always tell my guests, that our audience is not only Catholics, but also non-Catholics, many of whom are either ex-Catholics or evangelicals or, or Protestants or atheists or whatever the case. So today is a very unique day and it is the story of Our Lady of Guadalupe. And it's one of the miraculous stories we have from the churches in the Americas that has a, a relic that goes with it, an artifact that goes with it. Today is the celebration of Our Lady of Guadalupe. And in the 16th century, there was a young... Uh, peasant farmer by the name of, well, now he's called Saint, but by the name of Juan Diego. And the mother of Jesus appeared to him. And in a story that is fascinating, she left with him a sign of her presence, which was what is called a tilma. And that is still on display in Guadalupe, Mexico, in the Basilica of Our Lady of Guadalupe. Now, for those of you who are listening in the Boston area, overlooking Logan Airport is a place called the, Mad the Madonna Queen Shrine. And if you go in there, into the large church that's there. You'll see, as you're looking at the altar, on the right-hand side, in one of the little naves that are in there, you'll see a uh, an exact replica of this tilma. It's actually certified as an exact rep replica of the tilma. The way the story goes is, as I was saying, Mary appears several times to Juan Diego. And just to put it in a very... Um, uh, we'll call it bridge version. Obviously, he goes and he tells the bishop, and the bishop doesn't really believe him. You know, oh, Mary appeared to you. Oh, I'm sure she did. Now, I don't know if that's exactly what he said, but he got that general idea. And he doesn't didn't really believe him. So anyway, he goes back. This is the way the story was originally uh, relayed to me. He goes back, and, you know, there were several appearances of Mary to him at this one spot, which at one time was the spot of an Aztec god's temple or goddess's temple. So this is Mary saying her son is now the god of the world. Powerful image that you see also, uh, a message you see also in other parts of the world, obviously earlier in the centuries. But anyway, uh, so he goes to see her. And again, uh, he is in, he goes to inform the bishop and the, the bishop again doesn't really believe him. So finally, he ta at the request of Mary, takes off his tilma and Mary puts the tilma together um, with, uh, well, well, she, she gives him some flowers to give to the bishop, which are wrapped in his tilma. Now, there's various versions of this story, slight differences, but various versions. One of them is he's bringing the tilma to where the bishop lives, and as he's walking in, because these flowers, these roses, were arranged specifically by, by Mary, and he assumed in a specific way, that he walks in to bring the tilma to the bishop and he trips, which means he drops the tilma and the, the roses are not set in any particular way. Another way is he brings the tilma and leaves the flowers and they, they're they there. And either way, it's a very slight difference between the two. And what happens is suddenly, for reasons that he couldn't figure out right away, suddenly the bishop and his associate priest are down on their knees in prayer. And he's like, what's this all about? And he takes a look at the tilma and there is an, the image of the same uh, virgin that he saw uh, when she appeared to him several times. 
So that is the basic of the story. There's more to the story than that, but that is the basic element to the story. And it's a very powerful story that is a reminder of the reality that God is always with us. Now, I know many people from the evangelical community don't understand the Catholic concept of Mary, and no, Mary is not a God. We do not worship Mary. But we recognize that Mary has a special place in salvation history because she is the one to whom um, Jesus was born or through whom Jesus was born. And she is the reverse of Eve, as I've talked to you before. That's why we as Catholics do not believe that Mary sinned, which is many evangelicals do. And the reason is because if she was the reverse of Eve, she would have to be sinless in order to reverse Eve. That's the whole situation because Eve sinned by bringing, um, through, through Eve's disobedience and sin, we have sin come into the world. So it's one of the many things, but this is a very powerful reminder of Mary, uh, focusing us on her son Christ and leading people to see that. Never forget that reality that happened in our own time when they had the fire at the Notre Dame Cathedral. Where did everyone have to go? They had to go to Sacred Heart Church down the street, which is Sacred Heart of Jesus. Mary always, always, always points to Jesus and no, she is not a God in herself. We'll talk more on the other side of the break. You're listening to St. Anthony Overnight and St. Anthony and all... You can now leave a message for us, which we can air and discuss on this program. Just call 617-297-7452. That's 617-297-7452. 617-297-7452. Feel free to call, leave a comment, a question, or even feedback, and we may play it on the air. I can discuss your comment or question as well, so give that a try. 617-297-7452. 617-297-7452. I want to call your attention to Catholic TV, which offers great faith-filled, family-friendly programming 24 hours a day. You can find your cable channel at www.getcatholictv.com and you can watch online on the free apps or check out the YouTube channel. Daily Mass, Rosaries, the Divine Mercy Chaplet, and the Our Lady of Perpetual Help Novena are all available online and on demand. Check out catholictv.com. And don't forget our own website, catholicaudiomedia.com. So check that out, catholicaudiomedia.com. And don't forget, you can tell other people where to hear this program over at Catholic Audio Media or their favorite podcast platform. And you can connect to them through Catholic Audio Media and then subscribe to each particular one you might, whichever particular one you like, and go from there. Well, anyway, one of the fascinating stories, kind of a a similar example to what we saw with uh, what I told you to keep in mind, that when there was a fire at Notre Dame Cathedral, obviously that means Our Lady, and everyone had to go to the, um, well, I'm not even going to attempt it. You know I took five years of French. Don't speak a word of French today. The the (laughs) Sacred Heart Church down the street, it's a very similar dynamic that we see all the time, and that is Mary always points to Jesus. Always, always, always. Because if if we're looking at something in our church that doesn't point to Jesus, then there's something wrong. As a matter of fact, one of the things that I work very hard at is you'll notice that in every one of my homilies, Jesus' name is in there always. And I always it's something I look for all the time. I know there was a there was a group that was trying to stage a coup of our church and they would have all these documents and trying to teach people my favorite one is they said that jesus was the way the truth and the life no jesus is the way the truth and the life but very often you would look to see how much jesus name was mentioned in any of these and the the answer was virtually none and that's always a, a dead giveaway so i always make sure in my homilies at least once and preferably more you will hear jesus jesus name and if i read through a homily and i don't see it i said there's a problem with this homily i have to go back and see what's wrong because everything focuses on jesus always 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 so anyway there was, um, this was back, I believe, in the 30s, there was an attempt to uh, sabotage 
uh, this uh, do an act of sabotage that would destroy the tilma. So someone laid a bomb under the tilma in uh, which is on display in Guadalupe, Mexico. So obviously, if this was a bomb under the tilma, the damage would be done to everything within the vicinity of the bombs. The bomb goes off, and that's not what happened. But instead, on the other side of the church, well, in the middle of the church, because this is on one side, so in the middle of the church, there was a crucifix, and that was completely destroyed, even though the crucifix was nowhere near where the bomb was placed. And it was an indication, too, that the Lord is protecting Mary, but the Lord is also protecting his church, because Mary is also a sign of the church. The Lord is protecting his church. So very powerful images and powerful thoughts in powerful ways. And as I said to you, that the uh, this is one of two artifacts that we still have from this time. And the other artifact actually is the one that if you come to St. Anthony Church, you'll see a replica of that, which is very common in Brazilian communities, which is Our Lady Aparecida, which is an image of Our Lady who uh, was um, received by people who are trying to, it's a long story, uh, which I don't have the time right now, but trying to prepare a dinner for the Viceroy from P uh, Portugal coming in Brazil. This is back in the, I believe, in the 18th century. And um, this image of Mary appears, and to this day, no one knows where it actually came from. But it too, like Guadalupe, is on display in Aparecida, Brazil. We'll talk more tomorrow. Have yourself a blessed day. If you would like to support our program, please consider a donation to St. Anthony Parish in Alston, Massachusetts. There are several ways to consider this. One is to purchase any of our merchandise, which you can find at the shopping tab at catholicaudiomedia.com. That's catholicaudiomedia.com. There are coffee mugs there. There's also my latest book, Encounter Christ in Your Humanity, all of which you can find at the shopping tab at catholicaudiomedia.com. You can also donate to the show directly through either the Donate tab, also at CatholicAudioMedia.com, or by sending a donation through the U.S. Postal Service with your questions and comments at 43 Holton Street, Alston, Massachusetts, 02134. That's St. Anthony Parish, 43 Holton Street, Alston, Massachusetts, 02134. Finally, the best way you can support our parish is to attend Mass on Sundays at 10 o'clock and be a part of our parish. We thank you for any support you would like to give to St. Anthony Parish in Alston, Massachusetts, the sponsoring parish for this media outreach to Catholics and other Christians in the WROL, WEZE, -E, and podcast listening audience. In Cristo vivimos.